What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to Football Manager 2011. Yes, this is another one of our retro Football Manager Let's Play things. I don't, can you call this retro? I guess 2011, that is nine years ago now, man. That's a bit scary. We're living in the future, folks. We're in the future, but yes, we are back, of course. You guys have been absolutely loving this series and all the content that we've been dropping in the lead up to FM20. Which is absolutely crazy to say. Can I just say massive thank you to you guys for your support over on the channel. Um, of course, this has been a bit of a, a weird period. You know, we're waiting for the new football manager. It's coming out later than ever. And it's given me a little bit of an opportunity to experiment with content. And for the most part, you guys have been loving it. Which is obviously fantastic for me as a creator. It's really nice to see so many people as excited as I am about the new game. But also just all of you absolutely smashing it. Of course, last episode we talked about trying to hit 300 likes in order to get a special video of FM 2010 predicting the next decade of football. That was smashed within about five hours. It was ludicrous. I, I Yeah, but thank you. We're back again, of course, here in FM 10. Or rather, FM 11. Um, I feel like this was one of those years where not as much changed. Um, you'll notice this UI looks pretty similar to what we saw before last time out when we did our FM 2010 stuff. I did have a quick look at the features for this year's Football Manager, FM 11. The big one, apparently, was Twitter and YouTube integration and the ability to publish achievements and goals to social media sites. Is it weird that as, like... A YouTuber, I don't think I've ever uploaded a highlight package from Inside Football Manager to YouTube. I mean, has anyone? And if you have, let me know in the... I don't... I Impossible. Doesn't happen. Um, the other stuff that we had was press conference revamps, 150 new press qu conference questions. Squad registration and squad numbers were split. New gens, or regens, um... They were there was a new system introduced. That might have been the year where they got rid of regens. That might have been this year. I don't think it was. I think they they basically overhauled them this year anyway, um, to take into account different styles of play and stuff. Match analysis improvements, set piece creator, contract negotiations, which was something that I was looking for last episode. Improved interaction with the board. And uh, you could subscribe to stuff in your mail. There you go. They were the big changes alongside some new match views and dynamic league reputation. Exciting stuff. Anyway, shall we pick a team to manage? You can see we've got a few different leagues loaded. England, France, Germany, Italy. Of course, last time we were at Getafe. Where are we going today? Game. Boom. We're going to... end. Hmm... Okay, I am nothing against MK Dons fans. You know, if you're from Milton Keynes, I get it. But out of principle, I'm going to switch teams. <laughs> Controversy. Dra drama from the off. Right, who are we getting? Forest. I like Nottingham Forest. Media prediction first. All the pressure. It's on already. So yes, Nottingham Forest. Here we are in the Championship, which is now sponsored by N Power and is no longer Coca-Cola. That's the era of football we're in. Um... This looks largely the same. This probably isn't going to be as long a video as last time, just because Football Manager in 2010 kind of stepped forward to what we have now, and it didn't change a lot in terms of visuals. I don't want to say this was a 0.5 year, but it might have been. My understanding is, actually, this was one of the first years where you had interactions with players. So maybe if we look at one of our best players in terms of star ratings, like Chris Gunter... Can, can we talk to you and convince you to stay? So you can have a private chat. So I think this was new this year. Like, you could basically, um, you know, chat with players one-to-one. -one. Have you got any recommendations for signings? A forward? Simon Church. Why not? I guess that's a Welshman suggesting another Welshman. How good is Simon Church? He's pretty good. Do we have the money for him? No, is, is the answer. And I can't rejig the budget either. Ah, that's a situation. Right, so this is all pretty similar stuff. Um, team report. See, I kind of like these old team reports you used to get with, like, your best 11 and stuff. I know that this kind of exists elsewhere now. Are there any players here worth signing? Maybe not. The Polygon... Oh, I love the Polygon. It's it's one of those parts of Football Manager which is just degre a degree of familiarity. I feel like if I... You could take that hexagon and put it in any other game and I would just identify it as the Football Manager Polygon. Right, we can actually ask for more money. We're going to win the league. 
I'm going all out and saying it. I'm just thinking if there's any players here who are super, like, familiar. Obviously, Dexter Blackstop, did, 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 had he... Oh, okay, I thought that was England caps. It's, it's youth caps, Jack. Because, like, Dexter Blackstop, did he play for England? What universe is this in? Lee Camp. What a player. He's actually pretty good, isn't he? Rob Earnshaw. We've got a fair few, like, internationals here with some pretty good experience. I also saw Chris Cohen here. He, I feel like he had really good potential in Football Manager for absolutely years. Did he live up to it? Perhaps not. There's some there's some good players here. Who's our best player in terms of potential? It is Chris Gunter. And also we've got Carl Darlow here, who's only 19 years young. Right. Hmm. Where do we begin? I guess we should have a look at the tactics. I think the tactics are going to be the same. We've become familiar, I feel like, at this point with these very dated shirts. They haven't aged well, have they? Like, this layout, like, the new Football Manager Tactics panel is really sick compared to this. But apparently set-piece creators was was a thing that was added this year. I feel like the set-piece creator is one of those things that I don't use that much now. Right, edit set-pieces. Right, let's follow the tutorial. Welcome to the set-piece creator. The set-piece creator helps you create set-piece routines tailored to your managerial style and requirements. Right, next corner was this was this this must have been in i feel like kick takers was in a previous year to be fair i wouldn't even mind a thing like this in the newer games because i always forget to do my set pieces i can't be the only one you get like two games into the league season and you realize that every free kick and corner is being taken by a different player right so attacking corners was this the year no i think it was fm 13 or 14 when near post corners were just really op I mean, it's not that different to what we have now. What's the question mark for? I, I don't know. I guess it's to click on and then it gives you a description of what each of these instructions actually means. Can you, like, have aim for best header? No. I guess that was a thing that came later. Right, so attacking corners. I mean, this is not that dissimilar to what we have now. It's just more basic. Uh, defending corners... Oh, so you've got the different options here. So you can have some players man mark and some zonally mark, I guess. All right, these guys generically go back. These mark standard players. Is there any other options that we're not currently making use of? Stay forward. So you can have both, forward, both players set to stay forward. Is it weird that in an odd way, I kind of like this more than what we have now? Maybe that's just me. Direct free kick takers. Just add in a few players. and sure can be on them too. Can you click and drag? See, that's a thing that's like added into FM not that long ago. I want to say. It's probably been in there years now. But to me, it's not that long ago. Where basically, if you have your left-sided takers, you can just drag them onto the right. Good little quality of life thing. Attacking free kicks. So again, this is just kind of what similar to what we have now. Oh, so you can actually, you can drag players here, so you can have players like disrupt the wall, we could just have loads, just all disrupt the wall. Is that a thing that you can do now? I feel like in modern football actually, in the last year or two, they've changed the laws of football to do with how you can like interact with the wall and like, you know, screw things up. I guess I probably need a few players in the box to actually aim for, but we'll have loads of others disrupt. Disrupt the ball. It's interesting. On free kicks, you can select like best header, but you can't do that on corners unless I'm blind. Defending free kicks. This is all kind of fairly standard, isn't it? Throw in takers. We we have no throw in takers. Throw ins on the left. So you've still got all your throw in kind of routines and stuff. Can I tell the goalkeeper to go forward? Yeah, go on then. Off you off you pop. Can we do that on all set pieces? Can I go back a step? It looks like I can't. I guess it's because we're doing the tutorial. Throw-ins on the right. Yeah, go forward, keeper. And then penalty takers, last but not least. Summary, you've now created your set pieces as instructed. Once they've been created... Oh, so you can do further individual options on the tactics screen, apparently. Where is that? Tactic... Edit set pieces. This is just the same thing. 
Oh, I guess it meant just player instructions. I mean, I still want to change some stuff on set pieces. Do you really have to go through this every single time? I hope not. I'm telling my keeper to go forward on everything. It's for science. It's essential. Our keeper is going to mark their keeper. It's, it's all about psychological kind of advantage. And right, we'll go with the rest as being fine. Um, I'm just going to ask the assistant. Can I ask the assistant to pick a tactic as well? No. The tactic presets they added not that long ago are really good, aren't they? <laughs> that was one of my favourite additions actually in this year's game. Was the, um, well not this year's game, in FM19 being this year's game was the new tactic stuff with the presets. The amount of people who just download tactics anyway, it kind of just made sense. Obviously, all this tactic stuff doesn't really matter that much. This hasn't changed that much between versions, has it though? We can have a playmaker. Cohen, I want you to be our, our playmaker. Got our reserves is a little bit depleted. Blimey. So what was the other new stuff here? New contract negotiations. Let's have a look. There were a few players in one of our first news inbox items, which I was told I could um, approach to sign on freeze. Was it in the team report? We definitely got some players suggested to us. Here we go. So this guy... Christoph Avazak. I feel like I should know this guy and I just don't. Okay, so we have agents for the first time in this year's game. I'm pretty sure they they might have been there before, but they didn't have kind of personalities. How do I know how much he's going to want? I guess the answer is I don't. Suggest terms? Okay, we weren't a million miles apart. It's interesting, this kind of layout for stuff hasn't changed that much until FM20. But this is already a massive improvement on what we saw before. How about that? Six grand, yeah, go on then, finalise it. Apparently the left-back area is our area of concern, even though we have one of our best young players in that area of the pitch. George Koch, apparently we should be interested in. We'll offer him a trial. Let's see if anything comes of that. Um, apparently we want to bring in uh, Christophe Couet. He plays for Stade Lavoie. As you can tell, I'm, I'm fluent in French. Robert Earnshaw's out for two weeks. It's a disaster. We don't have 1.2 million. Let's attend the press conference. I'm absolutely delighted. It's a dream to come true. Everyone will give me a chance. So you still can't do, do the tone of things. You know, you can't have calm, passionate, all that stuff. Pro tip, just click all the top ones. Works every time, 99% of the time. Sion have made an offer for my Koch. That's not how you say his name, is it? Let's be honest. Right, we're going in for him. I can give him a really long contract and it doesn't matter. He doesn't want a long contract. He really doesn't want one. I thought that might sway him more likely to come towards us. Can we discuss the, the, the face of that agent that we were negotiating with? I actually can't bring it up again. The, the, the region faces are a little bit scary. Don't get me wrong, the hair of kind of new gen faces around this point is iconic. But it really did improve significantly kind of in the next few years of FM. Especially like the hair pack mods that you might remember people had. Not that long ago now, just before the switch to 3D kind of faces. Anyway, we've got a pre-season game against our reserves. We'll do that so we can have a look at things. Um, I will say, obviously, if you're someone who has been religiously watching this series um, of us playing through the older football managers, is there specific screens that I haven't been showing that you would like to see going forward? Please do let me know. I wanted to look at the... Um the world view. For some reason, world is under nations. I mean, go figure. I wanted to look at the world rankings and who the best players are. So Spain are number one in the world rankings, followed by the Netherlands, then Germany, Brazil, Argentina, England, Uruguay, Egypt. Surprised they're that high. I guess they were okay around this point. Um, is there a way that we can look at kind of the best players in the world? Here we are. So, um, yeah, Frank Lampard. Wow, okay. Frank Lampard, the only Premier League player considered in this kind of top list of top players. How good was he around this point? 32 years old. 
I mean, he's pretty blooming good there, isn't he? 20 natural fitness is the big standout one. Exceptional going forward. How good is Messi and Ronaldo? I feel like as part of this series, every year we've been going through and looking at how Messi and Ronaldo are looking, so we should continue that going. Messi just looks scary, doesn't he? That polygon is intimidating. And yeah, Ronaldo, age 25 now, so kind of hitting his prime. He's had that you know first season at Real Madrid here where he moved for 80 million. He's not bad, is he? <laughs> He's not bad at all. Only one goalkeeper rating, though, so make of that what you will. Xavi and David Villa also right up there. Xavi, I mean, look at that. 20 passing. Uh, creativity is 20. Flair is 17. I was, lo I was looking for vision down the bottom, but of course it's moved because it's not vision. It's just listed as creativity. David Villa, the best striker outside of Messi and Ronaldo. And Ike Casillas... Not bad, the Spaniard. Not bad at all with over 100 caps. Wow. Okay, the world, the world population. What is the world population now? That's one thing, actually. I believe in Football Manager, the world population doesn't change. I'm pretty sure in my Gibraltar save, it just stayed the same even 50 years into the future, which is a little bit sad. Anyway, let's get into this, shall we? Robbie Earnshaw's unavailable. Nathan Tyson, you can come in, my friend. Earnshaw, you can't actually play, can you? Um, I realised that Earnshaw was already on the bench and all I've done is swap the ordering of the bench. I should probably ask the assistant to pick the team. Kelly, is this really our best 11 right now? Do we have that fewer centre mids? I guess the the formation I've picked might not be a good tactic for our team. So there's archive tactics. That's kind of cool. Is that a thing that's still in the game where it memorises like old tactics that you might have had? Let's go with a wider 4-2-3-1. I can't help but feel like the team selection is broken. Maybe I have to clear selection and then do it. There we go. Oh, we've got Tungai. Lots of players here who I've kind of just forgotten existed. Right, fluid attacking. I can't wait to see the match engine. Someone said last video that they thought the, new, the match engine in FM10 looked better than the FM19 one, which I think is a bit harsh, as we discussed. And as I mentioned, the scaling of everything looked off. It just didn't quite look right. Be interesting to see if it's any different here. I feel like this is going to look graphically quite similar, and indeed it does. It looks a little bit sabutio y doesn't it? The stadium's got a bit more detail, or that might just be the fact we're in a better ground. Why is every Oh, I've got sound on. It's coming out of my speakers. I feel like I should turn up my speakers so you can enjoy the sounds of this. Oh. There's not even going to be crowd or anything, is there? I'm waiting for the shrill of a whistle. It's what we're waiting for. We've all been there. You sit down, brand new football manager safe. You've waited for the game to download all evening. It's two in the morning. It's not a pleasant sound, is it? The kicking of a ball. It sounds like they've just got a mallet and hit some wood. Hmm. I mean, I hope you can hear it okay through my microphone by proxy. Hmm. I'm, I'm turning down the sound. It's not even making a noise every time they touch it. It sounds... It, it's not super engaging. To, oh, my word. Oh, my word. That was a nutty goal. Can we get a better camera angle? Can we just look at this goal? On the volley, keeper's positioning is questionable, but that's pretty good. The keeper has died in his goal there. He's very small. The players aren't to the correct scaling. We've got touchline. That was in there last year. Was there any new views? TV. Oh, that's better. I feel at home now. I mean, it just look, It looks like the animations and stuff are pretty similar between this version and the previous years. Yeah, the players, their scaling is not right at all. Like, every, they're too small for the pitch and everything. Oh, what a tackle that is. Crunching tackles with a high press. Can we... Sc oh, my gosh. Hmm. It's not a great own goal in the match engine, is it? This is for people who think the defensive howlers only happen in newer football managers. This is for you. The person who looks through it with nostalgic eyes. Just crunching tackles going in and then... I mean, it's a great finish by the lad into the bottom corner. I can't help but feel like the keeper could have done a little better. 
I do quite like this TV angle. I don't feel like there's anything as similar as this. It's 3-0. Look, it's the corner routines. Is our goalie gone up or has he stayed back? Please tell me that's not tied to the tactics and we lost our custom set pieces. Let's have a look. Oh, it is. That's annoying. Right, get forward on every... That's the wrong thing. It doesn't matter. Get, for get forward on everything. Get forward. Oh, the whistle just went... I've just heard the whistle go in the background. I was in the middle of telling a little story, you know, about... We, we've all been there. You download Football Manager. You've left it downloading all night. You go to play the first game of the season. You're on your laptop. You've, you, you know, it's the dead of night. You've been playing all night secretly. And you start that first game. And the kickoff whistle goes. And it's just that deafening shrill of the kickoff whistle from the ref. Ball whipped in. Can, can we make something happen here? I still feel like it's quite hard to see everything happening in 3D. Like, I have to make sure with these videos that I render a higher than usual quality so that you can see everything. Because everything's quite small, like the ball and stuff, like in terms of how many pixels it is on the screen. Like, we have everything scaled up as well to help further. Go on, Black Stop. Tungai dispossessed, but he wins it back. Look at the battling. Dexter lays it off. Cohen! Oh my gosh, he's hit the woodwork. I mean, it doesn't matter what football manager I'm playing. I can always just get into it. Let's have a look. How did 2D look at this point? I mean, it looks the same, 2D classic. What about actual 2D? I can't tell if that's different. I, I just like 2D classic more than this. This feels unnecessarily detailed. Like, 2D Classic, for me, it's just clean. You know, there's not too much mess going on. It's, it's just right. Of course, in the newer games, you can, like, middle mouse scroll to change the scaling of the pitch. I can't actually do that here. That's one of the another underrated new thing of the newer games that I've kind of just taken for granted. I have been thinking about with FM20, do I want to play 3D or do I want to play 2D? And I still don't know. I'm still kind of sat on the fence a little bit, unsure of what the better option is. I need to do a poll or something to get you guys to decide for me. But I have been umming and ahhing about it. Blackstop, can he break through here? Look at him go. It's not a fast breakaway, is it? Can he cross it in? No, it's gone for a corner. I should turn off sound. Where is it? I guess I could just mute my speakers fully. It's just not a nice sound, is it? I tell you what, let's t let's turn up the speed here. We've scored again. I realise that we don't necessarily actually have to finish the game, do we? Here, I feel like we've seen a lot of the new stuff that this game has to offer. We're getting a little bit of a taster of the match engine. It's not flawless. It's it's fine. It's perfectly ser serviceable. I have noticed a few weird bits with players kicking it out for corners unnecessarily and stuff. The shadow on the ball is very very thick. I've noticed, and the players have no shadows themselves. Which is why the play... Oh my gosh. If that had gone in, it's incredible. We've hit the woodwork a lot. He was offside as well there, Marcus, for the rebound. Yeah, the players don't have shadows, but the ball does have a shadow when it's in the air. Selective shadowing is interesting. Our keeper's gone forward. Go on, Lee Camp. I take it back. We're watching the rest of the game. We need Lee Camp to score. Gunter's won it. Lovely stuff. Cohen... The Tug guy, can he keep it in? Of course he can. Whipped in, back post, over. Mm. I mean, I want to be like, we're going to stay here until Lee Camp scores from a set piece, but I fear we'd be here for a whole season. Looks like he's not going forward for the throw-ins. I'm, I'm not happy with that lack of commitment. I want us to have at least one more corner for a moment of excitement. Unfortunately, our players have decided that it's more fun to head the ball over the bar than actually try and head it on target. My Tides did some weird animation there. Blackstop, he's through. He's breaking away. Can he chip the keeper? No, he he, he, he he skies it. I think I've got defective strikers here. Apparently we've had zero clear-cut chances. Was that not a clear-cut chance? Were clear-cut chances broken in FM11? I had to check what year of football manager we were playing for a second there. I mean, we've hit the woodwork twice. Apparently, we've not had a clear-cut chance, but I feel like we've been clean from on goal a few times. Anderson, what can you do here? Crosses it. Oh, you love to see it. 
I don't know why I'm celebrating. I've actually done like a little fist bump there at me beating my under 23s 5 0. I forgot the replay highlight speed I set very high. Can we have one more corner? McKenna hits it. Keeper can't hold on to it. Rebound? Oh my gosh. Thought the defender was about to boot it out of his own keeper's hands there. Thrown in a dangerous area. Half cleared, but only as far as Chris Cohen. Back into the danger area. McKenna. We're loving our long shots, is what I'm learning here. We are loving them. Lee, I swear he was just handling it outside the area. Am I going crazy? Was it a free kick that he was lining up to take? Did he have the ball in his hand? Can we go back? Oh, okay. It was a free kick. Patrick, sorry, Patrick Bamford plays for our reserves. I want to see how good he is. I didn't even notice that we had Patrick Bamford in our team. Is he in our? He must be in our under 18s. Let's have a look. How good is he? He's absolutely awful. Hmm. It's not great. What does our scout say? Could be a decent one and a half star player. So, sorry, Patrick Bamford, you're not going to make it. Football Manager 2011 has decided. Gunter into the mixer over Anderson. There's something weird about watching this. Like, I, I, I work in games, so I work in the games industry, so I spot stuff like the shadows. I don't know. Maybe you guys. Didn't notice that? If you did notice it, let me know. Was there anything else that you noticed that's weird? The player scaling's off, and there's no shadows on anything but the ball. I feel like I'm just ruining the match engine for people who haven't noticed this stuff. You're never going to be able to go back to your old FM11 save games that I know you were desperate to go back and play and enjoy them. It's weird, like, this full manager still feels pretty familiar to me. This is like the first year, I think, where they went to the regular stars. Am I right in thinking FM10 that we were just playing? Like, the other day, it wasn't out of five stars, it was like out of ten. This is obviously before the black stars of potential came in, that kind of uncertainty. But notice, we've got Wes Morgan as well. We've got some good players in our team. It's weird, I was just looking at Wes Morgan there, thinking he's 26 in this year's edition of the game. If I was playing my save game, I'm sat there thinking, ah, oh, he's over it now, he's past his best, he's got to go. Yeah, please do let me know if there's anything that more, like, screen-wise, that you think we should have a look at in these save games. A lot of these screens are just fairly similar. Seems like teams still don't have, like, a profile page, which is one of my favourite additions. It's like my go-to page by default for any team now. It's just kind of the overview page of that club. So you've got the news and items. What was the other new addition stuff? I feel like it was the ability to subscribe to things, which we're already doing with stuff. Okay, we've saved we've saved our welcome thing to our to our notes. Excellent. Portsmouth have been given a parachute payment following their relegation. Can we get some Fs in the chat for relegated pawn? Uh, Bournemouth. Portsmouth, please. Where where are Bournemouth, speaking of the devils? They're like one of the teams who's gone the other way. Bournemouth. I don't want to look at people. I want to look at clubs. In League One, any familiar names here? Mark Pugh. Steve Fletcher. Danny Ings. 18-year-old Danny Ings. He's actually very good, isn't he? At least from what we can see, he looks pretty good for this division. Harry Arter. They had some okay players back in the day, didn't they, Bournemouth? I don't know why I've clicked on League One, wanting to go on like, the League Best eleven and have a look at who the other standout players are in this league. That's just not a thing. If we look here, you can see League One starting season put holders on Norwich City. Man, this is just... I'm just nostalgia-filled going through this. If we get to the end of FM20 and we're waiting for FM21 to come out, maybe I'll have to do a retro football manager save at some point. It could be kind of fun. But I feel like I've had to poke through a lot of the newer stuff here. I feel like this might be a better approach, like how we went through the tactic creation stuff and, you know, negotiating some contracts each episode where we are playing through these older FMs. We specifically look at the newer stuff because, as you can see, for a lot of the bits and pieces, things, you know, remain largely unchanged. 
But anyway, I've rambled off for, uh, on for long enough today. I do hope you guys enjoyed this trip down memory lane. Let me know your fondest FM11 memories down below. And uh, yeah, I will see you again in the not-so-distant future for a quick look at FM2012. <laughs>